If you're wondering whether Ruxo Litinib could help with your hair loss, and you want to know how to use it, make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you are new to the channel and you want updating on any of the latest hair loss news or any breakthroughs that we find out about, do make sure to hit subscribe. We're going into Ruxolitinib in this video, but just before we do that, if you're watching this video because you're worried about your hair loss, what you can do is you can click the link in the description to take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short questions about yourself and your hair loss, and then you'll actually receive free, expert and personalised advice on how to regrow healthy hair. But for now, let's get into the video on Ruxolitinib. Alopecia, no matter its cause, can be a debilitating condition for sufferers. As such, many will consider the various treatments on the market. One treatment that's growing in popularity is Ruxolitinib, an autoimmune drug. However, it's not a treatment that we'd recommend. In this video, we're going to discuss two of the most common types of alopecia, including androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata, and then we're going to introduce you to Ruxolitinib, how it works and highlight the studies that have been done on its use for hair loss. So first, what is alopecia? Well, alopecia is the medical term for hair loss, but it's also a broad term that can be applied to any type of balding. Let's look at the two specific types of alopecia, including their causes. So we've got androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata, but they're two very, they have two very different causes and two very different symptoms. AGA is also known as male pattern baldness, and it's the form of hair loss most associated with hairline recession and thinning. It can occur as you age, but it's also been known to affect those in their teens and early 20s. Now, the cause for androgenetic alopecia isn't 100% known, though DHT is believed to be the main trigger. DHT is a hormone that's produced from the interaction between testosterone, a hormone, and 5-alpha reductase, an enzyme. While DHT is present naturally, those with AGA have hair follicles that are sensitive to it. This leads to an inflammatory response which, in turn, causes hair miniaturization. If not treated, miniaturization can lead to irreversible and widespread balding. And uh, alopecia areata, on the other hand, is believed to be an autoimmune disorder. In simplest terms, individuals with AA have immune systems that attack their own body. They specifically target the hair follicles in this condition. This leads to patchy hair loss and it can affect both males and females, and we can see an example of that on the right. Now, the majority of people with AA will only experience it on the scalp. However, it is possible to experience it body-wide. Alopecia is a medical condition and one that should be officially diagnosed by a medical professional prior to treatment. If you suspect you suffer from alopecia, then we recommend that you speak with your primary care physician. They can refer you to the proper professional, which will be a dermatologist or a trichologist. Some sufferers of alopecia will always find it helpful to visit with natural health professionals. So guys, what is Ruxolitinib? Ruxolitinib is a Janus kinase inhibitor or JAK that was first approved in 2011 by the FDA for the treatment of intermediate or high-risk myelofibrosis. This is a rare bone marrow cancer that has been shown to respond positively to JAK inhibition. This medication is also being considered for other conditions believed to be connected to the JAK pathways, including AA and plaque psoriasis. So how exactly does it work? Well, as stated, ruxolitinib works by inhibiting JAK pathways. These pathways are known to signal an autoimmune response specifically involving T-cell lymphocytes. The immune system plays a critical role in overall health. Unfortunately, some individuals suffer from autoimmune disorders, including AA, that cause the system to go into overdrive. These disorders cause the system to believe that even non-threats and threats that need to be targeted and destroyed. Now, T-cells are just one cell of many that are part of the immune system. More specifically, they are white blood cells and act as the first line of defense against infection and invasion. So if individuals with AA are suffering from immune attacks on their own bodies, what can be done? Well, by inhibiting the specific JAK pathways believed to be involved in alopecia areata, which is JAK1 and JAK2, ruxolitinib is able to prevent the immune attack from occurring. This leads to healthy, natural hair growth. But the question is, does it work? Well, there's no doubt that the most recent research on ruxolitinib is promising. However, let's take a closer look at these studies and their implications. One of the larger scale studies consisted of 12 subjects with moderate to severe AA. All 12 subjects were given a 20 mg dose of ruxolitinib twice per day, and this continued for 3 to 6 months. As part of the study, each of the subjects were followed up after 6 months. And, of particular interest, take a look at the percentage of hair growth of the 12 subjects as highlighted in yellow. 
While the above study focused on oral treatment, there is a case to be made for topical treatment. This can prevent some of the more bothersome side effects and it may be sufficient for individuals with AA. Unfortunately, studies on topical ruxolitinib for AA are sparse. The two that we do know of had opposing results. The first case was performed in 2016, a female patient in her late teens presented with alopecia universalis. She underwent previous treatments, uh, but they were all unsuccessful. The patient presented with complete absence of scalp and arm hair and sparse hair growth of the right eyebrow. The subject was instructed to apply uh, topical ruxolitinib twice daily to the scalp and eyebrows. After 12 weeks, we can see the results on the right there. Additionally, about 10% of growth was seen on the scalp. This included numerous hair patches consisting of 5 to 10 mm darkly pigmented hairs. As mentioned, the other study was not as successful. In fact, the 66 year old patient saw no hair growth whatsoever. Uh, just before we go any further, I will link you to those three studies in the description. Now, this doesn't mean that topical ruxolitinib won't be available in the future. However, more research needs to be done, both for oral and topical applications of the medication for its use in alopecia treatment. So guys, now we're going to take a look at the side effects. As with any medication, ruxolitinib does come with some side effects. If left unchecked, some of these side effects can lead to even more severe medical conditions. The most commonly reported ones include pancytopenia, which is a reduction in red and, uh, red and white blood cells as well as platelets, and thrombocytopenia, which is a reduction in blood platelets, uh, anemia, which is a reduction in red blood cells, neutropenia, which is a reduction in neutrophilus, a specific type of white blood cell, and in addition, you are at an increased risk of infection when taking this medication. The main infection tends to be shingles, though any infection can take hold. Other symptoms include weight gain, abnormal ALT stroke ASD, which are liver enzyme levels, and elevated cholesterol. Now, should you use ruxolitinib to treat alopecia? Well, the results seem kind of promising, and this can lead to hope for many. However, it's important to consider the entire picture before proceeding with treatment. Firstly, the previous studies had small sample sizes, for example, 12 subjects. Whether these patients are representative of all patients with alopecia areata remains to be seen. Secondly, in my opinion, ruxolitinib shouldn't be your first choice. Why? Well, there is much research that needs to be done and there's still much unknown about its exact impact on individuals with AA. Additionally, the medication has yet to be approved for use in the treatment of AA and this may take many years still. So what can you do instead? Well, let's look at two ways that you can naturally treat alopecia areata. While you should seek the help of a dermatologist in treatment, there are two natural methods that we recommend. These focus on increasing the blood flow to the scalp, which may make it possible to increase hair growth and reduce symptoms. The first thing is scalp massage and exercises. Perhaps the easiest way is to increase circulation to the scalp and are massages and exercise. These can be performed by a professional or yourself. So guys, if you're interested in learning about scalp massage and scalp exercises, what I'll do is I'll link you to the pro area of the Hair God site. You can sign up there and then you can actually learn more about it. There's loads of examples of the different massages and different exercises that you can do. So click the link in the description for that. Also, we've got microneedling. A more intense way to stimulate the scalp is through microneedling. This involves the use of tiny needles which penetrate the scalp and create micro wounds. As these wounds heal, a three step process takes place inflammation, proliferation, and maturation. And again, guys, uh, we've already created a very in depth video on microneedling and how to use a derma roller. We go into the science, we go into how it works, and we show you how to use it and how to take care of your derma roller. So I'll link you to that video in the description. Now, alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition that causes patchy hair loss on the scalp and or body. This can cause self-esteem issues for sufferers and as such, it's not uncommon for most sufferers to seek out available treatment options. Ruxolitinib is an autoimmune drug that's used to inhibit the JAK pathways and while the drug has been tested on patients with AA and shown to be beneficial in many cases, it's not a treatment method that we would recommend. He said it's better to consider natural methods that focus on increasing your health, the health of your scalp. This can be done yourself or with the help of a hair loss specialist. So guys, I'm going to link you to the studies, I'm going to link you to the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz, the Derma Roller Guide and also the Pro Area of Hair God. Make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.